Okay, here we go. Now, um, I'm just testing this with a different type of microphone today because the one that I wear on the front of my shirt or whatever I'm wearing um, is producing, has been producing quite a lot of rustling sounds and I don't really want that and I'm sure you don't either. So uh, let's see how that goes. Before I get going there, I'm just going to remove a few hairs that uh, are either from the cat or me. You can never tell. And there are some lumps in the paint here. It's quite dry. It's dry enough for me to do what I'm going to do today anyway, um, which is just dramatize the picture a bit more. I'm going to darken it um, and I le the light parts that you will see will be mostly what I've just left uh, although some will be from me adding a little bit of white to the paint but not a lot if it all goes according to plan anyway. So um, let's just have a little quick look over it see what we need to do. There's a little something there that I don't want. This, this is definitely a cat hair. That can come off. That'll be repatriated later. I'm sure the cat will appreciate having some hair back. Okay, so there's another one here in the sky. You probably can't see these. Uh, they're pretty small, but they will show up uh, on the finished painting. Um, but probably only to anyone who decides they want to own it. And um, obviously I wouldn't want to send anyone a painting that's covered with most of my cat. Okay, so there's another one there that can go. That was mine. It's amazing how expert you become in um, hair identification as you uh, as you progress. Okay, that's pretty well it. There's something there that I don't want, but I'm not quite sure what that is. That could have been a small insect or an X sect. There we are. Right, I think we're ready to go. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to be using Payne's Grey, um, probably a little bit more of this blue up here, uh, which is um, ultramarine, I think, on this one. And I've just spotted something else. No, it's not. It's my imagination. And um, a, a few more light spots to the land, but not until I finish the sky. I'll probably I might intensify the light down here a bit more, uh, which is normal in my sort of pictures. Um, it focuses the attention down there uh, because the eye likes to go to the light and uh, that's what I'm aiming for. So off we go. So here we go again. Um, uh, just a reminder to people, cheap brush, hardware store, hardly costs anything, but I do clean them and I look after them. Uh, I don't know who makes it. I think it's, um, I don't know. Okay, that ends that bit of the conversation. It's um, so cheap, there's no manufacturer's mark on it. The only thing I know is it comes from uh, places where the wood is managed. So this is, um, and it's recyclable, of course. Uh, when it does it actually come to the end of its life. Okay, so now I've had a little change of mind. Um, first thing is, uh, I just will say, I've moved the microphone away a bit because I just did a test uh, in that first section there to um, see what the sound is like. And in fact, I was coming over a bit loud and a bit breathy. And um, I'm not a breathy person, really, but I suppose, you know, these microphones pick up everything. Um, okay, my palette plastic plate, of course, Payne's Grey, Ultramarine Blue and Alkid. And I am going to be adding a little bit of, um, and it sounds strange to some people, I'm going to be adding a little bit of um, red ochre, one of my favourite colours, to the sky. And you may think, oh, he's going to add brown to the sky. He's obviously some kind of twit. Uh, but trust me, it works and um, has quite a nice effect. So Payne's Grey, Alkid little bit of blue, not too much, because I want it on the grey side of, of, for the start. So tiny bit of blue pulled across, bit more grey, bit more alkyd. So it's it's nice and loose, but it doesn't drip. Don't want it to drip at this stage. 
when I'm starting a painting, um, if you have seen the video where I did this painting, you'll see the painting is quite fluid, not not drippy. Sometimes I like drippy, but I'm going through a non-drippy phase at the moment, so I'm avoiding the drip. And uh, so yeah, it uh, it stays on the brush even if you shake it; it doesn't come off. It's just loosened the paint a little bit, and as you can see, it's quite a strong tone. It doesn't matter, so don't be afraid. Uh, when you start a picture of putting too much dark in, you need the dark to show the light. Whoops, these are falling apart. No, it's not. Um, might have to tighten that in a minute. Anyway, so scrubbing the paint on. Don't be concerned about detail. Uh, oh, people tell me don't worry about repeating stuff. They like me to repeat stuff so that they really get it embedded in their hard drive. Um, yeah, brush strokes, doesn't matter. Brush strokes will go. Don't be don't be too delicate with your painting. Uh, it will look fiddly and fussed if you do that. What you want is it to look a little bit, I don't, dare I say, some people won't like this, but dare I say, a little bit brash. I'm seriously going to have to tighten that up. Back in a second. OK, so I'll continue. I don't think it's going to wobble too much, he said, with it wobbling. So you can see now that I've, by putting this in, suddenly things are a little bit more intense. We want intensity. What we don't want is a weak painting. Now, um, some paintings are very delicate and very, um, what they used to say in college to me, to us, was um, sensitive drawing, add sensitive drawing. Well, that's all very well if that's what you want. Um, I don't want necessarily sensitive drawing. I'm after um, strong emotion and feeling. To me, painting is about feeling and emotion. Um, I've never been one for delicate, pretty little pictures. Uh, I suppose I'm um, a little bit of a... Well, it's obvious, actually. I think I'm a, I'm a Constable fan, if you don't know who I mean. John Constable, English landscape painter, and William Turner. I think most people have heard of William Turner. Although, I have to say, I've spoken to people um, in America and other countries via Skype, um, which I do every now and then. And if you, oh, if you do want a, a chat with me um, about stuff, I, I won't be painting, I'll just tell you stuff uh, and have a, like a 15 minute chat about painters and how they went about stuff. So you can, you can um, ask anyway, uh, feel free to ask me if you would like a a chat about painting and my thoughts on painting. I'm I'm open to this. I don't do it much, but um, I, I you know I will I will uh, do it from time to time. So if you'd like a talk, let me know. Just hope it isn't too boring. But um, sometimes it's better to. Well, for me, anyway, it's better for me to talk to someone to explain things rather than to sit typing. Um, I'm one of the world's slowest typists. Um, I've used computers since since they were invented pretty well. Uh, but I'm uh, I'm ambidextrous, and I, if you if you know the pain and the suffering you go through being ambidextrous, it's quite strange actually because your left hand doesn't know what your right hand's doing or perhaps it does know what it's doing and it confuses the brain but I cannot touch type. I've tried, I've done all, someone I worked with once said, oh it's okay, just just um, type and close your eyes, eventually your hands will know where to go. Well actually they don't, mine don't anyway. So um, that was, that I find typing very long-winded and I wrote a book uh, a few years ago now, I wrote a crime novel, which you can buy on Amazon if you want. Um, 
it's available as an ebook or or a paperback uh, and i i typed originally 100 and, i think it was 120,000 words my god it was painful you know with two fingers uh, it was like i don't know some uh, it was purgatory but i got through it the upside is that there weren't many spelling mistakes because you type so, so slowly uh, you spot them or tend, you tend to spot them anyway as you as you work uh, and I've watched touched t touched touch typists and they're hammering through something really going for it and then they spend a lot of time fixing the errors I'm sure there are people out there who, who don't make many mistakes but uh, I'm not I'm not one of them so anyway, uh, so my point is, um, yeah, what is my point? Uh, my point is, get feeling in your picture. Don't, um, don't, don't pussyfoot around. Just get in there, get the effect. I'm putting a little bit of blue there just to break the grey, and I'm going to work on that with a bit of paper in a minute. So as you can see, because I'm, I'm not, I'm not taking a lot of trouble on this because um, there isn't really no need. That's a bit more dark there I think. If you show the dark in a painting early on it means that when you put light on the picture like a, a light cloud you don't then have to carefully get a brush with dark on it and go up to the edge of the white that you've painted um, because if you're careful, that's the only time you really need to be careful, is um, you just get a good tone of dark, whatever that dark's going to be, what sort of, you know, what sort of dark you like, um, and then you put the light on top, and you don't have to fiddle around the edges, that's what I'm trying to get at here. You know, sometimes when you paint and talk, you completely lose track, as I think I might have done a few minutes ago, I'll try and get back on track anyway. Uh, I often say to people, the easy bit is the painting, the hard bit is making the video and and um, thinking of something to uh, say. So, where are we now? I hope the sound is better anyway, I'm sure you don't want to hear me going, you know, heavy breathing over the, on a video like this. Okay, so let's go, I think I'm going to have some dark there too, actually. Why not? This is This is the frame of mind you need to be in because you know, painting is all about experience and um, experimentation. Every painting I paint is a new experience. I, I never really know what's going to happen. I just sort of um, sort of make it up as I go along, really. I found uh, in life one of the things uh, that always sort of rings through my mind is Fine, make plans, have a grand plan for the next five years, see what happens to that. Doesn't seem to work for me if I take things as they come. Let's push that right down there. Take things as they come. You can have a, you, I think you can have what I would call a pencil in plan for your life, but you never know what's going to come along. I mean, who would have guessed 2020 would have ended up as, as such a, um, Okay, uh, I, I haven't learned how to put bleeps on my videos yet, but who would have imagined that 2020 would end up as such a <whistles> year? Much quicker doing it that way. It's been a heck of a year. I had um, two venues, con well I'm repeating again, but never mind, eh? Uh, two venues pretty well wiped out. Uh, because people can't get here. It's nobody's fault, really. I can't blame anyone. Um, out of the two venues, which would have been over, I think, 22, 23 people, um, my second venue, I had one delightful lady from Sweden, and uh, that was it, instead of a crowd. But never mind, there's always next year. I have to try and be an optimist. Okay, so, now then, that's definitely got a little bit more oomph. So 
paper towel. Okay, here's a here's uh, an answer to somebody's question. Somebody said on YouTube, very nice, but do you have to use so much paper? Well, yeah. If I didn't have to use so much paper, I wouldn't use so much paper. But the good thing is that it is recycled and it will be re recycled. Uh, I don't think it matters about the oil on it because uh, paper that has print on it, and a lot of print is oil based, not all print, uh, some of it is water based. But I do believe that uh, paper with oil on can be um, salvaged. And for um, people out here who want to see a bit of equipment, a little bit of equipment. This is good strong stuff. It's got a slight texture on it, a few little sort of mottledy bits. Don't use the stuff that comes in small rolls that uh, with pretty patterns and pretty textures on. They look very nice on your kitchen worktop, but they're quite useless for this sort of thing because they um, fall apart. The sky is definitely getting interesting as an, and uh, you may know also by now if you've watched a lot of my videos and if you haven't watched a lot of my videos why not um, I don't worry about marks that the paper makes I mean I can sort of put all kinds of textures there it doesn't matter it's uh, not important because I'll be going over this with a few sweeps of a very big brush which will smooth it down a little bit I don't want it totally smooth because I like the texture um, Part of um, one of the places where people go wrong is that they they over smooth and they they over detail and they they use a little brush and they tweak away a tiny little brush. It's just a, a, a bit of a waste of time, I think. By all means, use a little brush for little sort of tiny dots. This that's this style of painting. Whatever your style of painting is, it's up to you. But for me on this sort of picture in fact I wouldn't use a little brush for these little details I use a palette knife and I just get some paint on the top edge there I hope you can see that uh, and I just move it around and make my light spots okay so you, as you can see I'm taking away some of the darkness in a few places but keeping keeping some so this is, it's sort of, um, I suppose it's pretty well like glazing. Some people will call it glazing, some people will call it the second coat, because everything you saw at the beginning was all done in one go. So this is the second session on this painting. Uh, and I used um, Alkid as the medium when I started. So that it dried quite quickly. The bit that I was waiting for before I could produce another video, because I think it's two weeks since I put this up, is the lumps of white paint. Now they they didn't have alkid in them when I put them on, so they remained sticky for a bit long, longer, um, and uh, now they are just right for me to work over. Now before I, I I'm going to add a little bit more white up here. Before I do that though, I'm going to get a big brush and I'm going to do some very quick smoothing. It will just take a second and for that I'm using this brush which has some stains on it but that doesn't matter it's all completely dry and all I'm going to do is just a few swipes like that nothing much. That's it. Now you may not be able to see but I can um, I, I could try zooming in. You will see some little um, lights and darks in this bit here uh, showing through. Not much, but it, I, it's an interesting texture to my eye uh, because obviously, you know, I'm standing here looking at it, and you're looking at a you're looking um, at a video, so you're not going to see everything that I can see. There is some grey in here that is stuck in the lumps on the white. Again, that doesn't matter because I'll be going over them. Um, before I do though, I'm going to put a little bit of brown in the sky. This is the bit that uh, I warned you about at the beginning. You may find it a bit strange, but it is quite a nice effect. 
an old dry pallet. Obviously when it's dry you can work on top. Just make sure there's no residue of cat on there. Okay. Red ochre. To answer more questions, people say, I can't get red ochre. Well, if you're in America, I think you, you can get transparent oxide red, which is basically the same. Uh, well, this is at, in French. You see, this is ochre rouge uh, transparent. I'm sure you don't pronounce it like that. Um, but ochre rouge, rude red ochre transparent. It just has a different name. If you can't get it, um, you can use burnt sienna or you could use cadmium red if you want. In fact, you, you can use any red you like. I mean, the thing is, um, with the way I work, and a lot of tonalists work, if you use green, and one of the favoured greens is sap green, any red added to sap green makes it interesting. Sap green on its own, a little bit flat. But um, greens, trees, clumps of trees, have a brownness about them. It's not so obvious in the summer, but of course this time of the year it gets a little bit more obvious. And uh, it just needs a bit of red. So um, I'm going to get my brush I was using a second ago. And because I don't want to add any more grey, I'm just going to give it a few wipes. No turpentine, just take off the loose paint. Don't have to take it all off just enough so that it uh, doesn't affect your picture. I have to answer another question that uh, repeatedly pops up. People say, can I get this effect with acrylics? And I think I said this in the last video. Um, well, in a way you can, but in a way you can't. If you use acrylics, it's a different technique. The acrylics obviously are water-based and you can get you can either spray water on your painting or you can get a, an acrylic retarder which slows down the drying time um, feel free to try it but you'll find it a bit of an uphill battle a little bit i when i did it i found it was a, it made me think this is like pushing custard up a drain pipe you're never going to win the, cust the custard will always beat you uh, so I don't, I just don't touch acrylics anymore. I used to teach it at a place down in uh, the south of France quite a few years ago now. Um, a lot of the people who came to this place uh, wanted to use acrylics and I think it was because they wanted to be able to take the painting away with them so obviously they needed it to be dry. Uh, so that could be the reason. Um, and I can show people how to paint with acrylic. I don't like it. I don't like the, I don't like the, um, well, everything really. Um, the speed that it dries, I just don't like that. It's uh, just too quick. It doesn't give you any, uh, any real time to sort of have, you know, fle for flexibility. Got a brush going bald here. Let's just get rid of these hairs. Uh, and I f frankly, I find the colours a little bit dead. All, all the people who absolutely adore acrylics uh, won't like that comment. They probably won't say anything, you know what I mean? But um, just go a bit mad there, I think. But, you know, there are, are acrylic aficionados and there are oil aficionados. Personally, I'm oily. And uh, I've always liked oil paint ever since... Um, before I even knew it existed, I think I liked it. It's just, uh, I just find it exciting. Colours are strong and interesting. I just found I could get more texture into uh, oil paint. Right, so I'm going to just push a little bit of brown down here. I mean, if you're going to have a, if you're going to have a storm, have a storm. You know what I mean? Let's not who, who wants a half storm? I certainly don't. Okay, now then, let's have a little stand back and look at that. Oh yeah. If you saw that coming, you'd be on the way back to the car or wishing you'd taken your umbrella with you. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of paperwork here. This may look a bit flat there, like a big giant sort of blob. 
uh, but I'll be working on that in a minute. See or not. Let's just think that we might have a little bit of a bit of light there. Let's just push that across there too. Yeah, why not? Once this is um, done, as I said at the beginning, I'm going to start another painting in a few minutes, which is based on this painting. It won't be exactly the same. Uh, it's just based on, as I said, and uh, because it seems to be quite popular. Now I have to confess something here. That painting that I just showed you is underneath this one. Now you may say, why is it underneath that one? Well, uh, I, I painted it quite a while ago. It's been hanging around. I've been dangling it all over Facebook and nobody actually wanted to buy it, which is fine. I don't care. It doesn't worry me whether, whether people buy paintings um, or not. I'm not necessarily in the business of selling paintings. Some people will cringe uh, when I say that, but it's true um, because I, I have found actually when you get a good YouTube following going, you don't need to sell the painting. You just need to make a video of you painting it. And over time, uh, you, you end up with, well, frankly, more money than you would have got if, if you'd sold the painting. I'm a little bit addicted to YouTube, actually. I have to admit it. I find it fascinating. The fact that you can wake up at three in the morning and wonder to yourself, do penguins have knees? And then you can go and look it up and you'll get the answer. Um, silly, I know, but uh, I seem to have this ongoing thirst for knowledge and it's not all trivial like you know whether penguins have knees some of it is some um, much more uh, exciting and satisfying but uh, anyway yeah I'm, I'm a definitely a YouTube fan right so I'm gonna start putting a little bit of white on the sky and then I'm gonna get onto the landscape as quickly as I can and um, then we can get on with the next painting. It's obviously going to be quite a long video, this. So if you're still here, thank you. If you're not, thank you. Not that you will have heard that, because you're not here anymore. Right, so I've got to get some... Um, let's find another clean palette. Right, here's a clean palette. It, look, it's a dirty palette, actually, but it's all completely dry. So what I want now is some white paint. Okay, a bit of white, titanium white, and uh, not too much, really, just a... Uh, I, I tend to, uh, when I have students here, I um, I say things like, well, you need, you need a small slug, a small slug of white, or you need a big slug, or even for bigger, you need a slug you wouldn't even want to step on. So anyway, this is a small slug. There we are. That's a small slug. Just that bit there. Right. So, palette knife. I'm not going to put this on too thickly because it's already quite thick here. Um, and again, I'll try and zoom in on just that bit uh, as I'm working to show you that there are ridges in it, but they, go, they will go when I start putting this on. So if I just put a little bit of paint on there. a good day for painting today because as I look out the window I can't see a sky exactly like this but I do see some interesting cloud shapes not that I'm looking at them uh, it's just that uh, if I wanted to they are there for me to gaze upon now okay so here as you see I'm um, am I in the way let's make sure I'm out of the way good um, it's uh, I'm not as usual I'm not being over careful over cautious here. Okay, so that's good. Ended up as an interesting little shape in the middle. We'll see. I might expand it a bit. 
definitely going to go down to the bottom with it but uh, just here at the moment I'm going to make it look as though it's got a bit of a connection with the world outside my painting very important touch this if you make the clouds fit comfortably in your picture it will look contrived and you don't want that you want you want it to look like a, a snapshot of nature so some of nature will exist outside your painting so that's what you need to do push it right to the edges so that it, it goes off and di disappears on its merry way to go and be a cloud somewhere else okay so let's just try that for now and this looks very harsh at the moment these clouds look over white um, you can have very bright bits of cloud in your sky obviously because that's what the sun does when it hits clouds but uh, sometimes it's better and more realistic when you mess them up a bit which is what I'm, what I'm doing here um, I'm going to put a strong bit of light down here because I put I put this red across on the uh, original painting and I'm not over keen on that now so I'm going to just sort of lighten the horizon just a little bit anything that I do like this on the horizon obviously can be repaired very quickly I mean if you think well this that bit there goes down into the landscape too much get a clean bit of paper and just remove it so that it blurs into the landscape like so okay so um, in a moment I'll go over it again with the big brush to uh, do a little bit more flattening and I certainly want I certainly want more white here am I keeping my ugly mug out of the way of the camera good as you do something like this you notice it's sort of fragmented down here I, I'll zoom in again um, again it's not a problem because it's temporary never never think well it depends on your, your style of painting I know there are people who will sit with a, a brush and do this all in minute and amazing detail it's very clever um, I've, I've been there done that um, in the past and I used to copy old Dutch seascapes for a living I might flash one up on the screen in a minute so you can see what I used to do um, I've done it and it's hard work and I it was sort of satisfying I suppose but it's not really what I wanted to do because all I'm all I was doing is reproducing some dead person's painting um, obviously for money but um, it was hard work frankly a lot a lot of hours hunched over a sometimes very big painting and uh, it was just um, grueling I think is probably the best word it was seriously hard work people don't really understand um, you know about being a, a painter like that when you're a copyist uh, you, you spend hour after hour after hour hunched over a um, painting either it's lying flat down so that you don't get any runoff some people like to work with a painting completely flat like that I don't I prefer it upright but one of the paintings I worked on was six feet by nine feet and frankly it was difficult to work on it flat unless you had scaffolding over it that you could crawl on and then paint down between the scaffolding I didn't really want to do that uh, and also finding room to do that can be quite tricky so um, yeah you end up uh, you know with pains in your shoulders and your arms and your neck and 
you have to really force yourself to go and do something else every now and then so anyway I, I quit that um, and I decided I'd, I'd rather concentrate on this sort of painting uh, loose loose as possible just, I'm just um just got a little bit of um, red on here I might just uh, I might just add a little bit just here just a few tiny little little bits oh here's another thing I want to tell you um, someone said well, sometimes when they look at my pictures they don't know where the Sun is because they you know they, they like to know the direction of the Sun well okay uh, let me think how can I explain that quite often you can have a day like this where the Sun is just out of view either the Sun is way up here and it's just coming down hitting these clouds or it could be just uh, it's just gone down uh, behind the horizon um, in, co in which case you wouldn't see it so it's throwing light up who knows I don't worry about it too much because frankly the Sun um, light bounces all over the place sometimes in the evening I can go out um, into the garden and I can look um, down the drive to the road and that's where the Sun is that's west I'm the window that is over there for me now is um, south facing and you'll get a really dreary sunset but when you look the opposite way when you look to the east where the light that is reflecting behind you in other words the Sun is in front but the light is actually behind you um, you get the most incredible colors so the Sun could be behind us and it could be throwing the light that way I, d I don't know and I frankly I'm not that concerned about it because um, uh, it's I suppose not completely anatomically correct so there we are a little a little a few little bits of red on there so I'm going to go back to the big brush again uh, there's not much on it from what I did last time if I do this a little bit comes off just a tiny amount really nothing to worry about and I'm going to do the softening thing and for the softening thing I'm not using the tip of the brush the brush is not hitting the picture that way it's hitting it on the side it's this motion like that and you'll see the effect that'll have on the clouds I hope in the camera quite quickly we'll see so because the landscape is dry I can go right along that edge there as brutally as I want and it won't matter um, because then I can if I don't like it I can just get some paper and I can wipe across so that the uh, horizon line comes back and I will probably do that in a second or two so I like these big sweeps coming up here let's have another few sweeps there I think So, okay, I'm sort of happy with that for now. And I'm going to now start, well, first thing I'm going to do is do a wipe along there with the paper, as I mentioned. I was thinking of making a bit more of a feature of the land, but I'm, I'm not bothered. I think it's more of a sky painting than a, a land uh, painting. So I'm not going to get, um, get in a tizzy over that one. Let's see what else we can do. This is a, this is the experimental stage now. Look, okay, so but I've been going like this, 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 this. You know, keeping it in the sky. But what you could do, this is um, something I do sometimes. I'll get back to what I was saying about acrylic in a minute when I remember. Uh, it's just to do this. Just do it that way. can give you a bit of a glow coming up anyway I was saying about acrylic um, some time back uh, people say yeah can you do this in acrylic you can paint a picture like this in acrylic but you would change your technique that's the best most simple answer I can give you um, it is it is the question that is asked to me I would think 10 to 15 times a week 
um, I was thinking of, maybe I should have done it ages ago, is just typing out a standard reply so I can cut and paste and tell people what I think. Um, if you, if you, oh, but, oh yeah, something else I need to say. If you do uh, send me a message on YouTube, I try to acknowledge everyone. Uh, I can't always because there are so many now and it's building up. But um, so I'm just looking in the camera. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I need a bit, a little bit there. I think just need a little bit of white there. Um, I try and acknowledge everything. Some some questions I can't answer because. No, I don't mean to be rude. I have no idea what the person is talking about. I don't think they're being rude, and um, sometimes it is. It appears by their name to be their language, but some some comments I just I don't know how to respond. And I do like to respond to people. I I have this philosophy that if people have taken the time to ask me something, and they've taken the time to look at my video, then I should at least take the time to reply if they ask me something. It's only polite, really. And um, But sometimes I can't reply. Uh, usually I will say, I'm sorry, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, if I missed, if I miss any comments, it's nothing, you haven't upset me, and I'm, I'm not angry or anything like that, it's just that um, I've missed it. Because um, the numbers are rising. Not that I'm complaining, you keep, you keep watching. Oh, and let's have a little, um, whoops, a little bit of promotional talk here. Oh, I quite like the light on that hill there now. Okay, and I'll zoom in so you can see it. Um, I don't know what, what my subscriber count is at the moment. I suppose I could have a quick look, just looking on my computer. Okay, it appears that I am up to 90,703 subscribers. It is rapidly turning into my hobby to hit 100,000. So if you feel the urge to subscribe, please do. Um, obviously, YouTubers need subscribers. It's how we, it's how we pay our bills, mostly. Okay, so a bit more, bit more wiping there, I think. I, I'm liking this misty effect here, uh, uh, so I'm going to keep that, I think. I'm not going to add any prominent trees or structures. Um, as I said earlier, I'm going to put in a little bit of green now to um, add a bit of sparkle to the landscape. And then we'll be off this painting and on to the new one. So I just need to get the green. So this this is light green. It's all it is, light green. I often use paint straight from the tube because um, I don't always mix things on the palette. I do my basic colours on the palette, you know, when I'm using sap green and red ochre and um, Payne's grey. Uh, and I might, when I get to the gla final glazing stage of a painting, this isn't, this may be the final stage, I don't know. I have to see what it looks like when I've uh, finished. But um, uh, some people have asked me, they say, what, what sort of, how do you work out your, your um, values and your tones and your hues and, and all this stuff? And, you know, how do you handle chroma? Well, um, the way I look at it is that I, I may have to mix some colours, but not all, because uh, sometimes someone has mixed this. It just wasn't me. So I'm not too worried about whether people think, oh, but what, you know, what are you mixing? What, what colours are you using to make that? A lot of the mixing is done on here. It's actually done on the um, painting. So um, it's some of it is unconscious. It's a little bit instinctive. I just uh, work on it till it looks right. And it's usually right reasonably quickly, so um, I don't get I don't get too um, phased about it. Am I in the way? I don't think I am actually. Good. 
so um, here for instance I'm just adding a few little white twinklies uh, white, where did I get that idea from? green right, I'm going to try zooming in so I, I've got green on my palette knife uh, but I've also got a tiny little bit of white on the edge just down this edge here which will be the top edge and all I'm going to do is um, this is where I'm I call it painting nothing and that is where you just put in the odd highlight which to the eye will look like something it may look like water it may look like um, a field that has got either um, been ploughed and it's just chalk showing through or a lighter coloured crop something like that who knows it doesn't really matter as long as the as long as it catches the eye of the viewer that's the beauty of um, painting in the toneless style and also the imaginative style is that I don't have to make this look like anywhere just double check I'm not in the way and you can see what I'm doing I think you can right I'll crouch down here if you hear a loud crack it's my back Okay, so let's get a little bit of something there. Yep, that's good. Um, because I'm not copying anything, technically, I, I suppose, it, it's impossible to make a mistake because the landscape is in my mind and who knows what goes on in my mind. I'll just double check, you can see what I'm going to do. Uh, because this is possibly somewhere that I've seen. These all come from my very weird memory. As I think I've said numerous times, I I never forget somewhere that I've seen. It always sticks in my head so I can always sort of um, use that and extract things. So if you, I hope you understand what I'm meaning, but you know, it, you, if if it's from your mind, it's you can't make a mistake. It's uh, something that you've seen. Don't know, who cares if it's not totally correct? Because when you paint a landscape, if I paint, if I went out and I was painting this picture, um, everyone would see it differently depends on the time of the day, the lighting, the weather, all kinds of things come into play. I think I'm just going to zoom out a bit so that you can see the other side of the painting because I'm going to be working on that in a second. So let's just zoom out. I was watching a video um, last night, funnily enough, and it was all about... Um, oh, I hope the sound's still there. My microphone slipped. It was all about um, the sort of finish that you give your videos and um, how, how professional you have to be and you may have noticed that I'm not the world's best video maker. Um, this may become very apparent now because I just noticed that the thing that clapped my head holding the microphone had moved considerably so I don't know what or whether you're picking up um, everything that I'm saying. Excuse me if there's any knocking sounds here, but I've just got to move the thing a bit. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not the world's best video maker. Uh, but I think, I'm not sure, I've got a feeling that a lot of people actually don't care that much because they like the... Um, I'm really having to work on keeping out of the way here. Maybe I'll move to the other side of the painting. That might be better. Okay. Excuse any knocks and bangs. Right. So, um, yeah, some people have been telling me things like, um, we don't care about the quality of the video or whether I get in the way because it's it's like being here in the room with me and I think that's actually very important uh, and I'm not saying that because I'm biased because I've just admitted I don't make brilliant videos but 
I think it's actually a factor. It's um. I've wa I've watched some videos where people are shouting in your face, telling you how to make good videos, how to get subscribers, jumping all over the screen, doing fancy cuts to their video, fancy graphics. And then when you look at the number of people that have looked at their video, it's incredibly low. And I wonder why. Is it because people just don't want that? Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think. I've been doing I've been doing my best actually to improve my videos by investing in a really good camera uh, which is the one I'm using to make this I've also got um, this uh, well you can't see it but it, it's a, a very good tripod it's absolutely solid uh, the one I used before used to wobble about a bit and in fact was very easy to, to tip over. This one I think I would have to um, run at it with great speed to make it even twitch. Okay, let's have a look in the camera, see what that's looking like. Yeah, it's getting there. I'm not going to do much to the foreground. I think I'm quite happy right at the foreground because that's not really where people are going to look. Well, I hope they're not, because I want them to look over here and up there. So we'll see. Yeah, let me know what you think. Some people say they like, they, they don't even care when I get in the way. Um, and I, I, that was a big surprise, because it, it ticked me off, because I think, oh, why don't you silly old fool, why don't you try and remember there's people trying to watch you paint? But they say, no, no, it's like, it's like standing next to you. So... You're either being very kind or polite. Okay, I think that's as far as I'm going on this one. Otherwise, um, you might be falling asleep. So I'll leave that as it is, and I'm going to zoom out so you can see the whole thing. And then I'm going to get on with the next painting. Hope you've enjoyed this. See you in a moment. Okay, so part two. Now then, um, this, as I said earlier, is going to be um, not a copy, but just something similar to this painting. And as you can see, I used lots of different colours in this. I didn't use my normal. For the landscape, uh, I did use sap green, but I also used a few other greens as well. Probably li um, light green with a uh, little bit of white in it, a lot of lot of white paint along the horizon, uh, which I spent some time pushing into the sky. So what I'm going to do to get this going is, um, I'm not going to worry about these colours at the moment. I will be uh, using my normals, um, but I'll add a bit of red to get that sort of nice, slightly um, maroon colour in the sky. I mean, uh, it, it'll be as I said, similar. It's not an exact copy. It's just something that uh, emulates that sort of look. So um, I'm starting out with some same brush I did the other painting with. I haven't cleaned it because I didn't need to. It's just got uh, sap green on it and um, red ochre. And uh, let's just go for it and see what we get. Uh, and I'm using Alkid again. Uh, I, I do still use um, linseed oil, but uh, I do quite like Alkid. Now this has got a very, very small landscape part. I might increase it just a little bit to, to give give room to put the um, water in in the foreground. And so off we go. Let's see what happens. It could be a complete disaster, but you never know, do you? So let's start out with just a line across here. It doesn't even have to be straight, which is good, because I'm not in a straight line mood today. Let me just, I have to keep checking every now and then that I'm not in the way and I'm sort of ducking uh, out the way here to, to um, keep myself clear. So I'm going to put a, a strong line there. Well, it's not strong, it's just strongish, I suppose. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit more alkid because I just realised I haven't got quite enough, quite enough dribbling around on my painting. Just got to find the bottle, of course. Here it 
years. Um, for those of you who don't know much about Alkid, it's this. It's, a, it's basically um, a, a gazillion chemicals. What's it got in it? It's got a bit of everything, really. But it, I, I think it's sort of resin-based with some um, other stuff. Of course, there's nothing on the bottle. It just says some... Um, increases the setting time to five hours, around five hours, anyway. So, uh, nice big gloop of that. It's funny stuff. Sort of um, amber colour. But even though it's amber colour, you can mix that with white, and the white will remain white. It doesn't um, doesn't change it, so you know you would notice. So I'm get a nice bit of brown in this because when I add the white to the horizon, I want that to show through. So let's see. We basically it's just a simple flat horizon, a few little little bumpies in it, like so. I'm going to leave a few white spots every now and then for various uh, various bodies of water. You can you can see how quickly you can do this and get the effect of trees and hills and things like that. So a nice bit of strong colour here. When you want to put strong colour on, just hold the brush, move it very slowly. That will chuck more paint onto the uh, onto the board. And um, I think another bit down here because there's going to be a little bit of a foreground. It'll be quite indistinct. So there's my water. I want the water to fade out a bit there. I don't want it to go too much off the edge of the painting. Just a little bit. Just enough to get the eye in that area. Now I could, and it's quite acceptable when you're painting a picture, to not do anything to the water. You could leave it as white, which is what I did on the original painting, and uh, it will still have the effect of water. Uh, a painting doesn't have to be covered in paint to be classed as a painting. As long as there is paint on your board, as I said, it doesn't have to be knee-deep in paint, because it's a picture. And a picture can be made up of darks and lights, and the lights could be the ultimate light, of course, which is white. So that could be it. Now I'm going to uh, leave that at that stage there, get another brush, and I'm going to start putting in the pale colour that goes above the horizon, and then I will start making the clouds, which is the bit, of course, that I'm mostly interested in. And I think a lot of other people are too. Cloud clouds seem to have this, uh, I don't know, this aura of difficulty about them. They're not actually difficult. But I suppose that depends on your perspective. I, I've painted a lot of clouds in my time, and um, I guess they do get easier the more you paint them. So, a little bit of shape there, I think. Okay, so that's that for that colour for now. So now I'm going to go on to um, a little bit of white. And I think I have some here. Oh, no. it's stopped being white paint and turned into a rock, so I'll get some uh, some more white. Okay, as I always use, titanium white. Nice colour, titanium white. It's very white. Okay, so there we go. And um, this is a medium slug. Well, medium to medium to large, I guess. And uh, as I said, I'm going to just swipe that across the horizon, and then I'm going to go over the horizon again to pull the two together. Okay, completely new brush. I wouldn't do that for everyone, but as you're watching. I'm making an exception. Okay, a little bit more alkyd. And really there's no mystery to the mixing on this, it's just white paint. 
So as I'm going to work to the horizon, what I don't want to do is hold the brush like this. If I do that, I can't see this side of the brush or what it's doing to the painting. This, will, this is actually quite obvious, and I'm sure you'll, you'll know that. Um, but when you do something like this, work from the top down so that you can actually see. I want to go close to the landscape. I don't want to destroy it completely. So off we go. doesn't matter what we do to the landscape. You know, I'm going to touch it in a few places, but I don't really care. And in fact, even if it pulls a bit of the landscape up into the white, that also doesn't matter. Not at this stage. So let's just carry on with this. There we are. Of course, you can't see the white because it's white on white, but trust me, it's there. Trust me, I'm an artist, painter, whatever you want to call me. OK, so there's a nice little band of white across there. So I'm going to go back to this brush, which has got quite a lot of paint on it. I haven't bothered wiping it, there's no reason, because this is the stage in a painting which is the fluid stage. Now you see what happens when I start doing this? It starts to get misty and that gives you distance. Also, as I go back and forth, I can dip up into the sky and pull a little bit of white down into the landscape. Again, it just adds an extra dimension. I'll zoom in on this and uh, show you what I'm talking about. I also want to check in the camera for reflections because the, what you don't want is a, a glare on the picture. Shall I zoom in? I think I'll zoom in later at the editing stage. Um, I'll leave it as it is for now. I mean, I'll leave the camera as it is. I'm not sure, but I think when I zoom in digitally, in other words, at the editing stage, uh, it, it may make the um, image a little bit... Um, grainy. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just putting a bit of tone up there. Okay and then back to the brush with the white on it and then I'll go over that just to sort of flatten it a little bit because this is um this is an interesting point actually. Would you call this um, would you call the painting that I am uh, not copying but emulating, would you call it factual? Would you call it true to life? Um, I, personally, I don't think it matters because nature has so many variations to it. Skies can be absolutely unbelievable colours. Okay, a nice bit of tone there. And I've got a, I've got a bit of a glow here um, and I'm probably going to leave it. So let's... Um, work upwards now. Um, this this white brush is now going to be used for the cloud bank which is going to go up here. Because there's white on it, uh, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll show you that as I go. I'll explain it as I go. It'll make more sense I think. So let's put that there. So I'm going back to the um, what is now disgusting palette and um, I'm going to use blue, which is ultramarine, which is here. You, I wonder if you can actually see. Yes, you can, I think, if the camera is giving me a good representation. And I'm going to get some of this brown up here and a bit more blue. And um, I don't really need to test it too much because I know it's going to be a reddish, brownish, bluish. Interesting colour. And then I'm going to do this. Did I get in the way? Probably. I do apologise. OK, I'm just going to make a shape. And it connects through here and it comes up to another bank of clouds there. It actually looks like another landscape on top of this landscape. But uh, that's, uh, that happens when you're painting. So let's get a little bit more maroony, I don't know what colour you call this. 
I just think it's interesting. Okay, let's just chuck that on there. It softens out underneath here, but that, I'll do that with a different brush in a moment. And it comes along to this side of the picture here. I won't disturb too much of the light underneath. And um, I'll just sort of make a shape. Sky comes up here, it's got a few sort of floaty bits up there. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of blue into the paint just there. It's what I call something for later. It'll turn into something. And if it doesn't turn into something, I'll pretend that it did. I'll tell you something, when you make when you make videos um, and you're painting a picture, so, you know, I mean, I, as I, I, I'm going to repeat it again, I'm not copying the other painting. I'm doing something of a, a similar type. But when you do that, and because I have, I, I have no desire to copy anything, um, it's just interesting to see what actually pops out. A little bit more blue in that. One, one of the things I uh, say to people when I'm teaching them is um, people when they start painting are very hesitant to start with because they're afraid of making a mistake. Now, you, you need to um, try not to think about that. You need to get that out of your head. Um, you will make mistakes. Things will go wrong when you start, but you mustn't let it worry you because if you do that, it'll change the way that you think about what you're doing. Yes, you have to um, you have to keep your frame of mind um, in the in the right um, right pattern, I suppose. Uh, if you if you are afraid of making a mistake, um, trust me, that that will happen. So the thing that I, uh, as I was trying to say a minute ago. Um, is to make the mess at the beginning. If you make the mess to start with, you don't have to worry about making a mess, if you know what I mean. Deliberately do it. Look, Make the mess, look into the mess, and see what is actually happening. See what structures come out of the paint, because then, believe me, that they are there. Um, you just have to learn to spot them. For instance, if I, if I just sort of chuck a little bit of reddish brown here okay and then in a minute what I'm going to do before I do anything else I'm going to go over it with a big brush even before I put the lighter parts on I'm just going to smooth it down a little bit and you'll see as I as I work through it that there will be things happening so let me just uh, get a piece of paper and I'll try and demonstrate what I'm talking about and just a little uh, reminder to people when you have a piece of paper, uh, there are several ways of using it, obviously. There's about four or five techniques that I use. If I want to smooth something out, I, I round it off so that it's nice and flat. That will wipe away. When you wipe away, once you've got paint on that, after about two wipes, it's no good. It just picks up paint, puts it somewhere else. If you want to wipe back to get a lighter area, for instance, if I decide to do that here, if I just pull that along there a few times, OK, that's, prob that's it now. That's had it. It's had it for that part of the painting. However, you could take this and you could add that somewhere else in there, maybe. But only a few, few swipes, because you see what's happened. I've taken away the light that was in there, and it, actually the light was quite nice. So then you have to turn the paper around, find another bit that's flat, and then you can bring the light area back. But it's got to be literally a touch. Otherwise, as I said, you're just pushing it round um, and, and it'll just end up all flat. It'll just end up as a, um, a flat mess, I suppose. And what you want is light areas in there sometimes, you know, just sort of. And, and, and try to be a little bit blasé about what you're doing, because that in your the way your hand moves on the picture can actually accidentally give you some interesting shapes that are worth keeping. So I'm going to. Um, I'm just going to sort of dab it around a little bit here. Just push the, just soften that edge a little bit. 
notice I'm turning the paper as I go. I want a bit of light, I want a bit more light. That sort of could be interesting there, but it's just not for today. I'll use that another time. I just want a, a bit of a light band there. So, um, and I can see now that I've got paint on there. I'll have to move my lighting because I've got a bit of a flare there. You don't want that. I'll be back in a second. Yeah, I think that's better. Good. Now the, the clouds are getting interesting. You see in here there's some interesting shapes. Now if you're, if you're a blue sky and white fluffy cloud person, that may not be what you want. You may, you may see that as completely disgusting. Uh, but that's just not the way I am. I like, uh, I like my drama. Um, well, I like drama, but only in my paintings. I like my life to be drama free if possible. And up here, you see, now there's some interesting shapes coming in there. So I'll be careful not to destroy them too much. I quite like that. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do, throw that away in the recycling. And uh, just give my hands a quick wipe. One thing you do learn, well, I learned at college um, that your hands need to be clean. Of course, I've, I've, you know, I've been painting this stuff here for a, me you know, a few minutes now. Um, and there's very little paint on my hands. I mean, I've just given them a wipe. But as you can see, there's hardly anything that's actually come off my hand. Uh, because I spent my life as a graphic designer doing um, quite detailed, uh, precise work, particularly early on in my career, um, you learn to keep your hands clean. And uh, the reason is, if, if this was, um, it's hard to explain to some young people, but because so much is done on computers now, but in the old days, everything that you see printed uh, had to be done by hand, either with, um, you know, inks and uh, or, or various types of overlay for different tones and things that um, appear in print. Nowadays, of course, the computer does it all and you just sort of do it in once, one, um, one lump. Um, but yeah, everything had to be done by hand and you had to keep your hands clean. If you didn't keep your hands clean, particularly if you were inking something, you know, very delicately up here, and you get some ink there, uh, it's going to end up on your artwork and um, you'd be uh, out of work quite quickly. So um, it's just a thing that's sort of hung over, I think. Just always keep your hands as clean as you can. So what I'm going to do now is just a, bit of, a, a little bit of smoothing. I don't want to do too much because I don't want to destroy some of the interesting shapes that are, that are in there. And uh, of course after a few wipes, you know, a quick wipe on the paper to take off the residue. In fact I'm going to do it, give it another wipe. And I'm going to use this brush down the bottom here now. On the original painting, there are some indications here of rain coming down. Now, I don't know whether to put them in now. Uh, maybe I will. Yes, I will, just to show you how you, how you do it. It's dead simple, and it's just, just that. I don't care about the landscape. I'm going back to that in a minute. It's better if you do this and don't do that, obviously. That could cause someone to go into a complete paddy. Um, that's a, a little bit of English slang. It means panic, a, a bit of a paddy over something. So uh, just a few movements like that. And it can, and it can also it can give the, the feeling of wind in your painting. Uh, so I won't, I won't do much more of that, but I think you can s probably see it, sort of. OK, so to fix that, though, dead easy, all I need is the brush that I was using a second ago with the green on it. I've got palettes all over the place here now. Okay, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of green and a bit of brown and I'm just going to sort of repair that. And to, to do that, just check that the camera. Uh, all I'll do is just sort of invent anything really. Let's just put let's just put a little bit of a bump on the horizon there. There we are. Now that line underneath what I just did is actually sort of interesting. 
bit of where I've brought the white down here, but not not interesting enough. So I'm going to just break it a little bit. There we go. So I'm sort of yeah, that'll do for now. So uh, back to the sky, and then I'll come down and I'll sort of finish off this bit here. I'm keeping this this part as quick as I can because the video's already um, definitely gone over an hour by now. And I know some people like that, uh, but I'm sure that a lot of people who started out on this are just not here anymore. So maybe they'll come back. Okay, so I've got my big brush. I'm just going to give a, another wipe ready so that when I pick it up in a moment, I don't forget. And because uh, if that was covered in paint and then I wanted to sort of smooth out some white, I would have a little bit of bit of a problem there. So um, up here on the original painting, there's got a lot of white coming down there. And I, I'm not going to leave that white in, in as much as there's no paint on it. I'm going to put some white on it uh, because um, uh, I'll need to get some undulating tones into it. Now the palette that I've got with white on it has got a little bit of green in it. And I don't particularly want that. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to get a new palette. These are ultra thin these and I'm just going to peel off one of the lower lower ones. So clean palette. Try and find somewhere on my table to put that one so that I don't get paint everywhere. Okay. So let's see what we can do with this. Plain old white paint here and alkyd. And I'm just going to chuck the paint on. And at the moment, I'm going to put it on without getting too close to this and too close to that. And the reason being is at the moment, I want I want it very clean in the middle. If I start touching here and here, it'll uh, infect, infect, contaminate the paint. And um, that's not what I'm after at the moment. I will, con I'll do a sort of controlled contamination in a few minutes. A little bit there. I think that's probably almost it. I might just put a little bit here. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to keep what I've done there. I've just put a little bit more white there off to the edge just to keep it uh, bright and um, a little bit under the top there I'm going to put a little bit here just for um, again it's like something for later my god we're rattling today aren't we why is that rattling so much it's simple really, Stewie. You didn't tighten the back. Okay. Now then, um, I'm going to, this is where I'm not going to worry about the contamination now. I want a little bit of light coming this way. Now I know that when I put it on there, it's going to pick up some of this colour around it, but I don't really care at the moment. So it's just uh, as quickly as I can, so that it stays reasonably clean. Quick wipe on the paper, pick up a bit more white, put a bit more clean white in there it down that way okay now it's got it looks like a brush mark but then again it's paint so you're going to get that and it doesn't matter because what I do to the surrounding clouds will stop it looking like a brush mark I'm also going to put a little bit there and I think a little bit here <clears throat> And I've already got some there, the, although you can't see it. And then I think it needs a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. Okay. Let's see. Like a bit there. Okay, good. Now, back to the big brush.
and um, sorry I just think I banged the microphone there big brush I already wiped it but I'm gonna just check that and I'm going to swoop about all over this now and just see what happens this is the bit I really like the seeing what happens bit now I know there's a lot of paint there I know there's a lot here it's quite thick there but it doesn't matter as long as you know forewarned is forearmed so I'll just know when to move this way with the brush and know, uh, know when to move that way to the brush so up here okay so that's enough now I don't mean the whole painting but that's enough in that area before I give it another wipe as you can see paint is coming off the brush I want that off the brush because I want to change what is here by smoothing and blending I don't want to lift paint and then have to find it dumping itself over here so a few swipes there see that's a good example of it if you can see it anyway it's only a little mark and it's easy to get rid of you just clean the brush and then just sort of tickle that area so um, over here now I'm going to do some pushing around you see even though I'm using a big brush the bit that I'm using is a small brush if you get my um, gist so I'm just using that that little bit at the end there okay so it doesn't matter the size of the brush well on this sort of painting obviously but if you were painting something with great detail this wouldn't be the brush to use but for this sort of thing it's absolutely made for it let's see what happens when we do that be experimental don't worry about a thing when you get to this stage of a painting and you think well things are going wrong um, try it. there's a little thing that I used to do and I have done it recently and that is to just completely wipe everything but wipe it in stages be careful don't over wipe wipe it and see what what you're leaving on the on the surface because it may be that you will inadvertently make something interesting so in other words every time I do this I look this and I look that and I look and I keep doing that all the time because there may be something I want to keep if I suddenly go you know like this here I'm gonna lose everything if I hold back and exercise a bit of caution I may end up with something that is actually worth keeping I just touch that bit there okay so I'm just I'm flattening out softening and a little bit of blending so it's like it's like um, like I think of an aeroplane coming into land making contact and then skipping off again if you if you do this you see that you got a line and you got a line if you come in gently they go away come in gently take off again okay now I'm gonna go back to the paper and this paper it's got some paint on it but it, it is uh, thoroughly usable so I'm just gonna find a a reasonably paint free part and I'm just going to do this now this is um this is the sort of essence of tonalism I guess you know there are no hard edges everything's understated and a little bit dark but there's nothing wrong with that as I always tell people you have to have a little bit of dark to show the light and uh, as you can see it makes interesting skies there's hardly any paint on that bit there when I look at it uh, across it with the light reflecting from my window I can see the bits that don't have paint don't really care uh, because if it works without paint I'm more than more than a happy bunny let's just get a little bit of light there now if you take away
paint, first of all, does it look okay there as it is? If it looks okay and you're happy, leave it. If it looks sort of okay but you're not as happy as you'd like to be, which I think is a normal human condition, just pick up a little bit of white paint and because I've taken off this colour and it's very thin there, it's just a stain there, if I put a little bit of white on that, you see it doesn't get contaminated. It stays nice and clean. With just a few dabs you can change the cloud completely. I don't actually like this repetitive pattern so I'm going to break that slightly. Just find another clean bit of paper and um, just break it up a bit to that. Still a little bit repetitive. Let's just push it up, push it up. Well, I do apologise for that. That was my that was my um, alkid falling on the floor, but it's still in one piece. So, as you can see, it's uh, sort of coming together. I'm going to um, I'm going to put a little bit of light blue up there. Um, in a second, and I'll probably I will use royal blue, I think, for that. All this stuff here that I'm doing now is I know, I'm aware that it's leaving lots of brush marks. Uh, it doesn't matter as usual because uh, I'll be going over it with this again in a minute. I just need to find a tube of royal blue, right? Royal blue or blue Rex, uh, Rex being. Uh, a French word for, I guess, royalty, Rex, although they use the word roi, which is R-O-I, I think. I have to check that. But anyway, it's royal blue, lovely colour. It's absolutely made for skies. And all I'm going to do is just put some here. I don't even need to use a brush. What you can do is just use a piece of paper. There's some blue. Okay, so where do we want it? I think we want it there. Just a little bit of blue breaking through. And Oops. And um, the big brush. The big brush, which is a major tool in what I do. So off we go. If it's going to make a noise and rattle, I do. I apologise already, but uh, it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so let's see what we can do with that. And a wipe. And another wipe. Oh, interesting sky. Not as a, you know, um, I have to repeat this again. I'm not after a complete copy of what I showed you. I'm after something similar. Just the feeling. Now that that picture. Okay, I showed you earlier on in the video. Um, the picture that I am emulating. As I said, I had it around for a long time. Nobody wanted to buy it. That's okay. I'm cool with that. I don't. I don't. Um, I, I may have steered you the wrong way earlier on. It, I don't mind selling paintings. Uh, it's just I don't go out of my way to promote them. If people want one, um, they'll ask. I actually think a, a lot of people don't want stuff shoved down their throat. Um, so yeah, if you want to buy a painting, ask me. That's no problem. But anyway, the the um, the painting, it was I don't know how many years it was hanging around. Well, I sort of quite liked it, and um, I probably like it more now it doesn't exist, which is of course typical. Uh, but the painting that I put over it is the 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 painting that basically actually had quite a profound change to my life because um, 
I painted the uh, the illusion of detail, and the link will be below. And obviously there'll be end cards on this video, and uh, you know what's called an end screen. And I, I'll show you a link to the video there as well. Uh, I had no idea that the painting was going to take off the way it did. If I had no, if I'd thought that it was going to do that, I would have taken a lot more trouble with the video. But I just banged it out really quickly uh, on an old camera, which um, didn't make the... Well, OK, you shouldn't blame your tools. Uh, you know, I um, I didn't make a very good video. I didn't have the light settings uh, spot on, so every time I moved in, it got lighter and darker and all kinds of rubbish. The sound wasn't wonderful. Uh, it's OK, I suppose, but anyway. Uh, so it... Um, came over as a bit of a scruffy video, but it's had over 1.8 million views. And because it had so many views, uh, my subscriptions went up, uh, my earnings from YouTube went up. Uh, I have no idea why it went viral, but um, it, it may have been something to do with Reddit. Um, I didn't share it to Reddit, I think someone else did. Uh, and Reddit, I find Reddit a little bit strange because I, I don't know what I did. I went on to Reddit and I thanked the people uh, that had commented on it. Um, and then I got banned. I got banned from Reddit. And uh, so I thought, oh, that's very strange. So I looked on uh, looked on the internet and it said, the e one of the easiest things to do is get banned on Reddit. And I thought, well, all I'm doing is being polite and saying thank you. And they banned me. So anyway, um, that's that. But... That, so the, I, I'm glad that I painted over the uh, original because if I hadn't, I guess I wouldn't have had the um, the effect. See, I've done that again there now, so I've got to fix that too. I wouldn't have had the um, the life change that came with it, and I'm very grateful to the Reddit people, whatever it, and whoever it was who. Um, put my video on there. So as I said, it wasn't me. It came as a complete surprise. And it, and it also, it, it, the way it changed things is it suddenly got all these people. I did mention in the video that if you want to come to France, just contact me. And suddenly I got swamped. A very interesting experience. Very enjoyable. Quite enjoy enjoyed the effect it had. Now I'm just scouting around the room here looking for a palette that I know I've put down somewhere. Hmm. Oh, there we are. And I'm just going to do a little something to some of these foreground bits. Uh, the white for the water. I think I'll leave that. I will be adding more in a minute up here, but I'll use the um, palette knife for that. But I just want to get some stronger darks. In the uh, in some of these greens here, I want I want a nice dark clump of trees there, and I think I want uh, I've got a beginning of something there. I'll go back to that in a minute. I think the foreground, um, as I said earlier, I think I'm keeping this really simple. I'm going to put something there. Well, when I say something, I mean obviously some kind of tree so you've got a, like a, a lake or a, a river and then on the other side here you've got um, <laughs> you've got the other side and uh, trees there I think uh, maybe another one here just to break see that light bit there see how much more interesting it becomes when you have the light the dark and the light Makes it, it it gives you perspective. In fact, I'm going to put another one there. And over here, just a mark or two. Uh, that I'm going to leave. That I'm going to get rid of that. And I think we're almost there. I've had your attention long enough, I think. I'm sure that by now, you all want to get your paint out and have a go at doing something like this. So there we are. Yeah, I think, oh, oh no, wait. I've seen something. And when I've seen something and I lock onto it, there's no letting go. 
So what have I seen? Well, what I've seen is this. Now, it's not so bad, but I think it's just a little bit crisp on the edge. So I'm just going to scumble it a little bit. There we go. Right, so I think we're there. I may come back to this in the future, but I don't know. Maybe that's all it needs. If I do come back, maybe I'll take some of these colours and put them in there on the water, but I won't do that until it's completely dry. That way, if I make a mistake, uh, nothing is lost. I can always wipe back. And the very last thing I do before I end this video is um, just add a few little twinklies. Oh, I've just seen something else I don't like. You're never going to get away, are you? I think... Uh, I wonder how many people are still watching. Let me know if you watch to the end. I always find it interesting to see who the see who the real hangers on are. Okay, so um, no hangers on. That's that sounds like an insult, doesn't it? I think possibly this is a, one of these cultural things. In English, it could mean just the people who are still there at the end. But I think hangers on also has a sort of parasitical ring to it. But uh, I don't see who's hangers on. I mean the people, the diehards, the one who's the ones who are still here. So what I'm gonna, I've got a little bit of white paint on this, and I'm just going to do. Let me just double check I'm not in the way. Just the odd little line, which could be water, and then more water, and then more water. It all adds to the um, illusion of perspective. What else do I need to do with this? Okay, I'm going to just let's just pull um, let's just pull a few bits of the water into the land along the edge. And I think that's it. Right. Okay. So, if you're still here, I admire you greatly, and I'm not being sarcastic. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you come back for more. If you have enjoyed it, please hit the subscribe button and also the little bell icon that's next to it so that uh, when I put up a new video, you'll get a message saying that I've done that. And uh, if you want to come for lessons next year, I guess we just have to wait to see what's going to happen next year. Nobody really knows. So um, if you do come, it'd be nice to meet you and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.